Hiya guys, Scott here for the MXQproject.com and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how you can update your B-Link GT1 Ultimate box to the latest firmware using the Amlogic USB burning tool. As standard, the GT1 Ultimate comes with Android Marshmallow installed, but B-Link have since released a couple of files that will allow us to update the box and run Android 7.1 as well as their latest firmware. We're going to need a couple of things before we start, which is your B-Link GT1 Ultimate box of course. You're going to need your computer or laptop. We're going to need a couple of files off the internet, the links will be in the description, but we'll get to that in the tutorial. We're also going to need a male-to-male -male USB cable. This is so we can connect the box to the computer in order to burn the firmware. So if you've got all that, then great, you're ready to follow along. I'll see you again in a second, guys, and we'll begin the tutorial. So welcome back guys, as you can see I've clicked on the link that I've left in the description. This is going to take us over to the Freak Tab forums where B-Link have made a handy little post which actually contains everything we're going to need to follow along with this tutorial. Now on the post here is just a quick list of specifications for the box and the update. So if we just take a look at that and kind of make sure our box matches up, everything should go well. There's also a couple of files here. There's the SD card zip file, which is for updating via an SD card. I haven't actually tried this zip file yet. The last one I tried to upgrade to Android 7.1, the SD card file didn't work. Well, this is a lot more recent than then, so I've yet to try that. We may cover that in another video. But let's stick to the USB version for this tutorial. So we have here the USB zip, which will contain the image file that we need to write to our boxes. And it also contains a link for the correct USB burning tool that we need to install to uh, be compatible with our boxes. So let's go ahead and click download on the USB zip file. This will just open a, a separate tab and should, yeah, it should just download the file for us. Might take a little while because it's quite a large file, guys. And we can also go ahead and click the new burning tool for USB here and download that at the same time and kill two birds with one stone. So I'm going to let these files download, guys. I'm going to come back shortly when it's all ready and we're going to move on to the next part. Okay guys, so I've downloaded the USB burning tool and I've launched the installer. It will pop up that you need administrator privileges. So just click yes and then you'll hear this screen. So we'll just quickly go through the installation. So we're just going to click OK. Once you've chosen your language, obviously I'm speaking English, so I'm going to stick with that. We're going to hit next. Next again, a pretty standard installation. You guys all know what you're doing with this. Create a desktop icon. And off it goes. Towards the end of the installation, it will bring up another installation for some drivers, as you'll see. Yep, here we go. Just go ahead and click Next, and it will install the drivers required. So when we get to actually um, plugging a box into the computer and start updating, the computer's going to recognise everything, and everything's going to go really smoothly. Okay guys, so I've installed the USB burning tool. Everything was successful, and everything's launched correctly. When you first launch this, it's going to ask for administrator privileges. And as you can see though, everything is in Chinese. But don't worry, it's uh, easy to fix. You just come over to this second menu item on the top and click English. If you do speak another language, I'm sorry, I'm not entirely sure how you can translate this. There only seems to be the option for simplified Chinese, English and traditional Chinese, I believe that is. Um, but I could be wrong. But anyway, yeah. So the first thing we need to do here is we need to click File and Import Image. And you need to navigate to where you installed your update file. I've just stored mine in this folder here, but you'll have stored yours elsewhere. And we're just going to double click and it's going to import the image into the software. This can take a little while as they are quite large files, but providing it reads the image okay and there are no errors, it should go well. Okay guys, so the USB burning tool has loaded in the image file that we've selected. As you can see down at the bottom of the screen, it's showing the path to where our firmware file is, which means everything's uh, been loaded without error or anything like that, so we can actually start getting this burnt to the box. Now the next part, we're going to have to go over to the box itself, and I'm going to show you how you can connect it to your computer properly so we can actually physically burn this image file to the box. So yeah, I'll see you in a second guys, and we'll get this all connected up and we'll be ready to go. Okay guys, here I am with my B-Link GT1 Ultimate box and we're going to go over the steps on how to connect this properly to the computer. So the first thing we need to do is make sure our USB cable is plugged in at the computer side because otherwise it's not going to work at all. I shouldn't have to say that, it goes without saying. Second of all, we need to find the reset button which is just here on the back showing up on camera there. You also need a long thin object to be able to get at the button inside this little hole. I'm using this little pin that I found and you just need to press in and make sure you feel a click. And that means that the reset button is being pressed. So hold that down. Once you hear the click, keep it held in. 
The next part we need to do is get the other end of our USB cable and we need to plug it in the USB OTG port which is on the side here. It needs to be the side one otherwise it won't work. Keep that button held in until you hear the new hardware connected sound on your computer and we're pretty much done. So if all goes to plan I'm going to see you again on the USB burning tool and we can get on with actually burning this firmware. So here we are back at the USB burning tool and as you can see there's a message here saying connect success. Now what that means is that we've successfully connected our GT1 Ultimate boxes to the computer and the program itself has recognised them so we are pretty much good to go. All we need to do now is click start and this is going to start the entire burning process. It's going to erase our current firmware, our current bootloader, U-boot and everything like that and it's going to install this brand new firmware for us. So I'm going to pause here and let this finish because it can take a little while. So yeah, I'll be back when this finishes and then we can kind of have a quick recap of the tutorial and I'm going to show you this new firmware in action. Okay guys, so the uh, burning is finished, it's uh, completed successfully, 100%, so there's nothing else left to do on the PC side of things now, so let's just quickly cover what we've done today. We've downloaded the firmware update from B-Link that B-Link have provided, we've also downloaded and installed the Amlogic USB burning tool. I've shown you how to connect your box properly up to the burning tool and how to import your firmware and start off the uh, the burning process. So now that that's all successfully completed, our box effectively has new firmware installed on it. We should now be running Android 7.1.2 and there's nothing else left to do except head on over to the TV. We're going to boot the box up and see if everything's worked correctly and we're going to have a look at what's different in this update. So join me again in a second guys while I'll be showing you what we've achieved in this tutorial. So here I am guys at the home screen of the GT1 Ultimate and I'm pleased to report that the update was a total success which in turn makes this tutorial a complete success so I'm really pleased about that as well because it could have went horribly wrong. But yeah, I've run this startup wizard that pops up on most of these TV boxes when you first launch them or when you first install new firmware. And yep, everything's working as it should. It's picking up the Wi-Fi. It's even picking up my 5G Wi-Fi uh, as well, which is great. So yeah, looks-wise, there's not much different. It still runs really quick. I think actually that the performance on this is actually a little bit snappier. So let's go ahead into the settings and just confirm that everything we've done has worked. If we go into about... And yeah, as you can see here, we're running Android version 7.1.2, which is great. And again, here we are running Nougat. So yeah, everything complete success, guys. And of course, you have the B-Link staple game, Fishing Joy, which is, which is nice, uh, I guess, if, if you like that sort of thing. I don't, but you know, some people do. The people must like it if they keep insisting on spamming every firmware for every box that they release with, with, with Fishing Joy. But yeah, anyway, yeah, complete success. Um, there's no bloatware at all, really, on, the, on on this firmware, so everything's got to run really quick. You've kind of got a blank slate to install all your apps and things on. So yeah, I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, guys. Um, I hope you've learned a few things. Um, you can also apply this to other boxes, the same similar methods for all these Amlogic boxes using the USB burning tool. So yeah, um, nothing more I can say anymore, guys. So yeah, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, give me a like. If you disliked it, give me a dislike. I'd rather you didn't, but you know, if you do, I can't stop you. Um, yeah, don't forget to check out our other videos guys and obviously subscribe to the channel because it really helps us as a project and it really motivates us to keep pushing out more content i know matthew's got a couple of things he wants to do and he's going to get out there in the next few days and my next tutorial i'm going to be teaching you guys how you can compile libra elect for your unlogic devices so that's going to be a really exciting tutorial guys and i look forward to that so i've been scott you've been watching the mxq project and i shall see you in the next video